When you look for the word first in the Bible, you find this teaching. You go first to God with your problems. We don't take our problems first to the bar. We don't numb our fears with narcotics. We don't deny the existence of our struggles. No, we take our problems first to Christ. He said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And look, all these things will be given to you as well. Would you like some advice to take into this year that will save you from a month of heartaches? Go first to God with your problems. The moment a problem surfaces is the moment you take that problem to God. Don't take it out on your friends. Don't take it out on your family. Don't try to solve it yourself. You take that problem first to God. Seek first the kingdom and see if all these things aren't given to you as well. Take it to Him first. You see, when God's people put God first, blessings begin to flow. I want to challenge you to let this be the year you put God first. Keep first things first, he promises, and then everything else will fall into place. Actively seek God's direction. In other words, God's strategies are better than ours. The prophet Isaiah said, his ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. God's strategies are always better, so I've got to seek him. I've got to ask him for direction. And how do I do that? I do that through prayer. Why? Because we don't want our plans to prevail. We want God's plans to prevail. We want God's wisdom in our life. That's why we seek him. That's why I get up in the morning and pray and talk to God. What? I need God's direction. I can't live life on my own impulses, my own strategies, my own gut instinct. No, I need the spirit of God giving me wisdom. And that's something that can only come to pass through prayer. But here's what I've noticed. Many of us in the body of Christ, churches and Christians, we go to God with an already made up mind. Like we know what we're going to do and then we're just asking God to bless it. But God's saying, I wasn't in it to begin with. And you're asking me to bless something that I didn't ordain in your life. I didn't want you to make that choice. You made that choice. And I believe God wants to help you no matter what the situation is. But God's not here just to give to you. He wants to guide you. Not just give you things. He wants to guide you. In Psalm 32, it says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. How many of you are thankful that God has a best pathway for your life? But we have to seek his direction. Well, Josh, I don't know. I I don't know how this all going to work out. Why don't you just read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. It says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. And don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do and everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. God will keep you on track. Don't plan first, and then when you're out in the middle of doing what you want to do, pray for God to make it work. No. First, we pray about everything, acknowledging God in all of our ways, and He will direct our path. But there are times in our lives where our actions aren't necessarily in obedience to what God's told us to do. Why? Because we want to do something else or what God's asking us to do doesn't feel good or what God's asking us to do doesn't align with our plans. Our actions are inconsistent with what we say that we believe. So what do we have to do? We got to get the right habits. Habits are powerful. They create our future. The habits that we live with and our actions that we do every day create the future that we're going to experience. Today, I would dare say that many of us are sitting in the middle of a life that we've created by our own habits, by our own actions. And when we're experiencing difficulty in life and when we're tired of it, it's then we got to say, you know what? I can't keep doing this thing anymore. It's bringing pain into my life and it's not working out. So what habits does God want to help you drop this year? What habits does he want to help to establish on the inside of you? You see, for some of you, I believe that God wants to help you establish a habit of prayer. A habit of prayer in your life where you start seeking God in the morning in a fresh way. You start knowing God's will for your life. Some of you, he just wants you to be faithful to come to his house more. Make church a priority in your life. And I know the kids' sports are important. I know that things come up. And I'm not saying that all that stuff is bad. But if you don't make parents, if you don't make church a priority in your kids' life, don't be surprised that when they move out of the house, it's not a priority to them. 
It takes faithful consistency in our actions to get breakthrough. I believe breakthrough people do consistently what other people just do occasionally. Most Christians I know who grow cold in their faith, or who, who, who grow unproductive or unfruitful or unhappy in their lives, do not do so out of a moment of rebellion, but do so as a result of minute by minute or day by day just drifting off course. The book of Hebrews, the writer of the book of Hebrews says, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard lest we drift away from it. Let the discipline of the first fruits recalibrate you every day, every week, so you can stay focused and you can stay on target. Now, one of the saddest scriptures in the Bible is Jeremiah 2.32. It says, my people have forgotten me days without number. But I love the NET translation of Jeremiah 2.32. Does a young woman forget to put on her jewels? Have you ever forgot your cell phone and went back home to get it? <laughs> Says, will a bride forget to put on her wedding dress? But my people have forgotten me for more days than can even be counted. We'll go back home if we forget our cell phone, but has anybody here ever forgotten to pray and thought, oh, I'm, I'm going back home to pray before I start this day? I'm suggesting that you no longer try to work God into your schedule, but you work your schedule around God. He would like to guide you and lead you through life. And literally, let me say it again, be involved in everything you do, in every decision you make. God wants to be part of it. Be patient. Be patient and wait. Don't give up. Don't give in. James 1 says, consider it a sheer gift when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced out into the open. And it shows its true colors. In other words, you really in it or not. It says, don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do it, its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. One translation says that you'll not lack anything. If I don't give up on God, then I know on the other side of my faithful obedience and patience that I'm going to be I'm going to be stronger than I've ever been. I'm going to be more mature than I've ever been. My marriage is going to be better than it's ever been. I'm going to have not be lacking anything that I need in my life. If I don't throw in the towel and give up when times get hard, I'm going to trust God and God's going to bring a breakthrough. You know how you're going to get through the attack you're facing, friends? You know how you're going to get through the trials and the tribulation that you feel like you're facing today? You're only going to be able to get through it with God's help. Many years ago, God finally got this through to me, and he simply said this. You cannot do this. And by this, he meant life, ministry, whatever your this is. We're talking about your this. Rather, your this is raising four kids. Rather, your this is being a single parent. You cannot do this unless you put God first in your life. That means I can't do without Him. How do you keep going when times are tough? It's because you believe that your breakthrough is right around the corner. My breakthrough's on the way. I may not have it yet, but I'm closer today than I was yesterday.